Good afternoon, this is Sean Golding with Golding & Golding, here to discuss the basics of the bona fide tax resident of Puerto Rico test. It's a question we, we deal with often, it's complicated unnecessarily, let's go through the basics. So the idea is Puerto Rico, not a state, right, it's a commonwealth, so it's taxed a little bit different. If, uh, if a U.S. person, well, if a, if a U.S. person doesn't reside in Puerto Rico and they have income in Puerto Rico, they're going to be taxed on their worldwide income anyway and Puerto Rico income is going to be included. But in the converse situation where a U.S. person resides in Puerto Rico full time and meets the bona fide residence test, income that they earn in Puerto Rico is normally exempt, doesn't have to be included on, on uh, U.S. tax returns. So what does that mean? That means if you're able to source all of your income to Puerto Rico uh, using the sourcing rules, then guess what? you may not have any uh, any other tax liability. In fact, you may have no U.S. income tax liability and you'll just be subject to Puerto Rico tax, which is typically more favorable than, uh, than uh, U.S. tax. So why don't we kind of go through the basics here? The analysis can be broken down basically into two different categories. Those are the considered U.S. Uh, citizens and legal permanent residents. And those who are considered non-residents that would only uh, be considered a resident because they reside in Puerto Rico uh, sufficient to meet the test. So when you're a U.S. citizen or a legal permanent resident, you have to meet the bona fide residence test uh, 183 days, but there's five different ways to meet it under uh, the regulations. And then you can't have a tax home in, a, in another country. You can't have a closer connection um, to the U.S. or other territory. It's basically a counting days test for people who do really reside there, right? You, you can't have your tax home in the U.S. You can't have your tax home outside of the U.S. So as long as Puerto Rico is where, where you're doing your thing, um, it's not the kind of place you could just show up on the weekend, get some sun, uh, go back to the U.S. and claim bona fide residence, especially lately uh, when, when suddenly everyone's now got themselves up in arms with incentives code 60, uh, which is a combination of the prior acts 20 and 22, along with a bunch of other of the acts that were all kind of mushed together. U.S. believes everyone going down to Puerto Rico uh, now under the incentives code is committing tax fraud. In reality, it's just smart tax planning or avoidance, uh, not illegal. So when you're a non-resident, it's a little different. When you're a non-resident alien, and the only reason why you would be subject to U.S. tax uh, was because you're residing in a U.S. Uh, state or territory uh, and you meet the substantial presence test, that's still going to apply for for Puerto Rico. So let me let me say it a little a little differently. If you're a non-resident alien, in order to prove you're a bona fide resident of Puerto Rico, <coughs> excuse me, you have to meet the substantial presence test that you would otherwise meet if you're a non-resident alien living anywhere else in the United States except where you see the term US, you substitute the territory so that you have to show, you know, 180 days over a three year period using a one to one, three to one, six to one ratio. But the idea to keep in mind is you have to meet substantial presence if you're a non-resident alien uh, to meet the bona fide residence test in, in Puerto Rico. You wouldn't just use the same presence test that a U.S. citizen or, or legal permanent resident uses. So we, we touched upon this briefly. Uh, when it comes to the tax, it's a whole other world and you really got to go through it and plan it properly. But typically, if you're a U.S. person residing in Puerto Rico and, and Puerto Rico is the only place that your income is sourced, then that's all you have to report to Puerto Rico. You don't have to include that to the U.S. government. So a couple of things to keep in mind. <clears throat> Excuse me. If you're, if you're a U.S. person and, uh, and you're living in Puerto Rico, even if you have income outside of Puerto Rico, it, it's still taxable in the U.S. Some people get, get a little thrown off and they think, hey, if I live in Puerto Rico full time, then only my U.S. sourced income is taxable in the U.S. That's not true. U.S. taxes you on your worldwide income. If you reside in Puerto Rico, you meet the test. Great. Your Puerto Rico sourced income doesn't have to be included on your U.S. tax return, but your non-Puerto Rico income, whether it's U.S. or foreign based, is still reported to the U.S. under the worldwide income tax rules. Now, you may be able to qualify for the foreign tax credit, but uh, presumably you wouldn't qualify for the foreign earned income exclusion because then you would have a different tax home and, and, uh, and you wouldn't be able to show bona fide residence in, uh, in Puerto Rico. One very important thing to keep in mind, okay? FBAR. If you are considered a resident of Puerto Rico, you still have to file the FBAR. But accounts you have in Puerto Rico are not um, considered foreign accounts. So uh, if you were... Living in Puerto Rico, you met the bona fide residence test. 
all of your income is sourced in Puerto Rico, uh, you have a bunch of accounts in Puerto Rico, and technically you have an FBAR filing requirement because you're a U.S. person, but you wouldn't have to file the FBAR because you wouldn't have an annual aggregate total of more than $10,000 on any given day if all of your accounts were in Puerto Rico. If you're out of compliance, which is super common in situations like this, people living in Puerto Rico and not filing U.S. tax returns, there's plenty of ways to get into compliance. There's various uh, offshore amnesty programs. There's a voluntary disclosure program. If you're willful, can't certify under penalty of perjury that you're non-willful. If you're non-willful, there's a lot more opportunities available. Streamline filing compliance procedures, domestic and foreign. You've got um, bona, uh, sorry, you've got the delinquency procedures and reasonable cause. Lots of free information available on our main websites and our sub websites. You can always reach out and schedule a reduced fee initial consultation if you think it's appropriate. Again, my name is Sean Golding with Golding and Golding. Thank you for your time. Enjoy the rest of your day.